The film opens in 1982, showcasing the vast icy expanse of Antarctica. A small snowcat maneuvers through the ice field with three Norwegian scientists on board. Sounds like the setup for a very stupid joke. They're trying to track a particular signal. Initially, everything appears normal as they exchange jokes and engage in a casual conversation, but soon after, their device emits a strong signal. So, they decide to stop and investigate the area. But before that, the ice beneath them begins to crumble, causing their snowcat to plunge through into a fissure where it becomes wedged. In the next scene, we are introduced to an American paleontologist named Kate Lloyd, who is currently examining a creature at her lab. During this, she is visited by two researchers, a Norwegian scientist named Dr. Sander Hoversen and his assistant, Adam Finch, who tells her about their new discovery, a structure and an organism. To conduct a detailed study, they need a paleontologist. So, they ask Kate to accompany them to Antarctica, which she agrees to. Following this, the team boards a helicopter and heads towards the Norwegian camp in Antarctica, with pilots Sam Carter and Derek Jameson, and crewman Griggs. On their way, Sam informs them that they need to wrap up their mission in a couple of days due to an approaching storm. After some time, they land at Thule Station, where they are welcomed by a mechanic named Lars, who doesn't speak English. Wasting no time, Lars drives the team towards the designated location, a thousand-year-old ice cave. Upon arrival, they are welcomed by a group of geologists, led by the station chief named Edvard Volner. Edvard introduces them to his team members before guiding them deeper into the cave. Soon after, he shows them a high-tech spaceship that was found inside. Some distance from the spaceship, they show Kate a strange alien-like creature encased in a large block of ice, which leaves her in shock. This is way more believable than that shit they found in Mexico. Back at camp, they discuss the removal of the creature, which they believe will take at least one day. The following morning, the team excavates the creature from the ice block and transports it back to Thule Station. Dr. Sanders orders the team to firstly take a tissue sample for the investigation. Kate opposes this, arguing they need to do sterilization and take other precautionary measures. However, Dr. Sander tells her not to contradict him in front of the team. Following this, they drill a hole into the ice extract a frozen flesh sample from the creature and securely store it. Later that night, the team is celebrating their discovery when Dr. Sander announces that he has never seen a creature with an exceptionally high cellular level like this. He believes that the entire team will be remembered by the whole world for this groundbreaking discovery. As he continues talking, the ice block containing the creature starts to melt. Lars's dog senses something amiss and incessantly barks in an attempt to escape its space, but Unfortunately, Lars's dog doesn't speak English either. Shortly after, Jameson comes out of the bathroom and goes to the room with the ice block. Much to his surprise, the alien creature bursts out from the ice block and escapes through the ceiling. This movie was originally going to have practical effects like the original, but the dickhead producers with all the money said no, CGI. So we're left with this garbage, you know? Jameson anxiously goes back to his team members and alerts everyone about the incident. They all hurry to the room and stare at the ceiling in shock because nobody thought that the alien would be alive after thousands of years. After this, Dr. Sander directs the team to split into twos and threes and search for the creature. One pair investigates the dog's kennel and discovers a large hole in the wall, along with blood and fur. Another pair, Henrik and Olaf, spots the creature beneath one of the wooden huts. Upon closer inspection, the creature resembles a large beetle, which is slimy, has multi-crab-like legs, a large mouth with giant teeth and tentacles. All the fans in Japan say, yay! As soon as Henrik turns his back to the creature, one of its tentacles pierces through his chest, splattering blood on Olaf's face. The creature then drags Henrik back under the hut and begins digging on him. Olaf screams out of fear, prompting the other team members to rush to the scene. They instantly open fire on the creature, but it has little to no effect on it. It simply jumps onto the hut, climbing through the walls. In a desperate attempt to kill the creature, the team douses the hut with kerosene and sets it on fire, burning the creature to death. In the aftermath of this event, the group returns 
returns to their cottage and mourns Henrik's loss. Olaf seems to be traumatized by the incident, and as a result, they decide to transfer him to the city for medical care. Despite the team's lack of confidence, Dr. Sander emphasizes that studying the creature is their responsibility as scientists. Following this, Dr. Sander and the entire team bring the remains of the creature and Henrik back into the room. With Kate's assistance, Dr. Sander proceeds to dissect the creature as they cut into its tissue. They see the upper half of Henrik's body inside it, and Kate comments that his skin looks almost new. Just then, Kate discovers a metal piece and asks about it. Henrik's colleague explains that Henrik had a titanium bar inserted into his arm to stabilize a fracture. Kate further questions why the bar is outside instead of being within his arm, but nobody knows the answer. Later on, as Kate and Adam examine the creature's tissue under the microscope, they make a startling discovery. The cells are not only still alive, but they are overtaking Henrik's cells and then replicating them. The next morning, Carter and Jameson prepare the helicopter to transport Olaf while Kate is still in the bathroom. There, she notices blood stains on the floor. She uses a tissue to pick up four bloody silver dental fillings. Upon checking the shower, she finds a lot of blood, but no body. In the meantime, Olaf and Griggs get into the helicopter with Carter and Jameson, and the four take off. Kate hurriedly rushes outside to stop them. Dr. Sander questions her act, and she insists that they shouldn't leave. Thankfully, Carter notices Kate signaling them, so he decides to land. Just then, Griggs's face unexpectedly splits in half, classic Griggs, and his chest opens to reveal tentacles and rib-like teeth. He soon transforms into a monstrous creature and attacks Olaf, causing the helicopter to crash into the mountains, seemingly killing all four members. After witnessing this, the rest of the team members try to seek help from outside Antarctica, but the approaching storm disrupts communication channels. Edward decides to relocate all the members to the second camp. Meanwhile, Kate goes to the bathroom to inspect the bloodstains, only to find them mysteriously vanished. Someone on the team has a shamwow. Perplexed, she goes back to the team and urges them not to leave because something strange is happening. Kate explains her theory that the alien can clone a person by replicating human cells. In addition, she claims that the reason why metal stuff is found outside the victim's body is because they cannot be replicated by the aliens. However, her warnings fall on deaf ears and everyone exits the room, except for Juliet. Later, Juliet lures Kate to an abandoned room where she reveals herself to be the alien creature. She launches her attack on Kate, but the latter somehow manages to escape out of the room. While running through the hallway, she encounters Carl and tells him to run. However, he doesn't, and as a result, falls victim to the violent creature. No! Carl! As Kate shuts the door to the hallway, Lars and Adam arrive with some weapons. Lars holds a flamethrower and burns down the creature. Afterwards, while disposing of Carl's and Juliet's bodies, Kate explains that the creature operates like a virus. Anyone coming into contact with its blood or part of the creature's cells gets assimilated. However, she's not sure of its solution, so Adam suggests that they quarantine themselves until the threat is eliminated. Dr. Sander then insists on a blood test to identify who may be infected. After this, Lars and Kate disable all the snowcats while Adam and Dr. Sander work in the lab. Before you comment saying this is just like a mugus, just know the thing came first. The same night, Carter and Jameson arrive at the camp after surviving the helicopter crash. Everyone believes that they must be the creature's replicas because they couldn't have just walked away from such a dangerous crash. One of the team members named Paydar even points a gun at them, but Kate intervenes. She suggests that they be confined into a room until their blood samples can be tested. When the team returns after locking up the pilots, they discover that someone burned the laboratory with all the blood samples in it. Panicked, they start to accuse one another, but Kate comes up with an idea to conduct another test. She grabs a flashlight and proceeds to check everyone's mouths. Those with dental fillings are deemed safe 
as the creature's replicas can't replicate inorganic materials. The suspects are narrowed down to Dr. Sander, Edward, Colin, and Adam, who lack dental fillings. My money's on Adam. Adam's are always CG replicas. Kate holds them all at gunpoint and instructs Lars and his friend Jonas to get Jameson and Carter. In the next scene, the two head to the building holding the pilots, only to find the place empty. It turns out that Carter and Jameson have escaped through a hole in the floor. Lars begins to search for them, but he's suddenly pulled into a building. Following this, Jonas rushes back to inform the others, presuming that Carter and Jameson have killed Lars. Shortly after, Carter and Jameson re-enter the building, where they have a standoff with Padar. Meanwhile, the rest of the team hides themselves behind Padar. Edward orders Padar to execute the pilots, claiming that they're the real enemies. But just as Padar is about to pull the trigger, Jameson shoots him in his head. During this, he also hits the flamethrower tank, which causes an explosion. The blast throws Edward away, causing him to be severely injured. With Carter and Jameson now in possession of all the weapons, they compel everyone to enter a room with two members carrying the wounded Edvard. Once in the room, Edvard suddenly undergoes a violent transformation of being the creature. It launches its attack on the rest of the team members, fatally injuring Jonas and Jameson in the process. Soon after, the creature gets a hold of Adam and starts absorbing his body to become even more powerful. Kate and Carter try to get the flamethrower working, but are unable to do so due to the trapped air in the main fuel line. Once repaired, Kate attempts to burn the creature assimilated with Adam, but it escapes outside. With her heart filled with guilt, she burns Jonas and Jameson before they can fully transform. The main threat now is the replicating creature, infused with Edvard and Adam. Meanwhile, Dr. Sander hides behind a desk for protection, but the creature attacks him, infecting him as well. On the other hand, Carter and Kate split up while pursuing the creature. The former heads to the kitchen, and the creature suddenly appears. Just before it can attack, him. Kate uses a flamethrower to force the creature to burst through a wall, causing it to fall into the snow outside. They then successfully burn the creatures assimilated with Edvard and Adam. While observing the charred remains, they notice the infected Dr. Sander driving away in a snowcat. Carter suggests letting him go, saying that he has nowhere to escape as the storm will freeze his body. However, Kate disagrees, pointing at the risk of him infecting others if he manages to leave Antarctica. As a result, the duo get into the other snowcat and follow Sander to the location where the team first discovered a spaceship. As they step out of the vehicle, Kate notices Carter's earring in his left ear. While conversing, he tells her that they didn't kill Lars. They then explore the open space of the spaceship, which suddenly activates. Its movement causes Kate to fall underground, rendering her unconscious. A few moments later, she wakes up and finds herself inside the spaceship, surrounded by pixel-like entities floating floating in the air. While observing these pixels, the creature assimilated into Dr. Sander's body emerges from behind and pursues her into a tunnel. Kate hides in a corner where the creature cannot reach her. There, she spots a grenade and grabs it, but before she can use it, the creature grabs her leg and pulls her out of the tunnel. After a desperate struggle, she somehow throws the grenade into the creature's mouth, exploding it into pieces. Why does it even have a mouth? The impact of the blast triggers the breakdown of the spaceship system, causing it to shut down. After this intense incident, Carter and Kate exit the ice cave and decide to drive towards a Russian camp located 50 miles away. Just before she gets into the vehicle, she notices that Carter's earring is missing, raising her suspicion. Maybe he just realized it looked dumb. To make sure, Kate asks him to point out where his missing earring is located. When Carter points to the wrong ear, Kate concludes that he's infected as well. As a result, she incinerates him with the flamethrower. As he burns, Carter lets loose an inhuman screeching noise. <laughs> <clears throat> Following this, Kate boards another snowcat before driving away. In the final scene, a helicopter lands at the ruined Thule camp, where the pilot, Matthias, discovers a lifeless and frozen man seated by the radio. It turns out he committed the unthinkable. Matthias yells out to see if anyone is around, and a gunshot startles him. It's Lars, the only one left behind and not infected. Suspecting infection, Lars demands that Matthias show his teeth. Just then, Lars's dog, which was previously 
previously killed emerges and runs away. Realizing that the dog is the last standing creature, Lars orders Matthias to start the helicopter. They then pursue the dog, and Lars shoots his own pet from the helicopter. Hell of an ending. Hell of an ending! No! Carl! Carl! Not Carl! God damn it! No! Carl! Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.